All right, Eric, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you good? How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I got so I got a topic I want to talk about, and it, this could go any which way. I'm trying to think which way I'll word this. Okay, I'll go with this way. Um, how do you think what we view as um, beauty standards are created? Like who who starts that? And is it a problem? Well, a lot of that starts with aristocracy, in the, uh, historically speaking. Like the rich people decide what's pretty, and then the poor people start to emulate that, and then the rich people change it, and that's just the cycle goes. It is kind of a problem. A lot of it is fairly unrealistic. Like it, a lot of beauty standards are broadly attainable, but it's like the requirements to attain them are a little beyond most people's needs. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I hear a lot of people say, I mean, usually I hear it connected to the patriarchy or something or li like something to do with the reason that models and actresses all look a certain way is because men in power want this thing and then because of this problem that is only done by these certain people it makes all children like makes a uh, girl children have to like look to these standards oh, and that's that's one of the issues that i have with the discourse around this is that it's always it makes girls feel bad yeah, men yeah. have wildly unrealistic standards as well but people don't generally look at that like uh Look at the difference between like She Hulk and Captain America, right? She Hulk is not big, gigantic. She's she's like built like an Olympian, right? You, she's mm -hmm. just thin. But if you look at men as represented in comic books, action movies, like romantic comedies, even most guys don't look like the average guy. They're kind of built. They look like they diet. They work out a lot. And a lot of people don't have that kind of time. So it makes like uh, it makes guys feel bad. Uh, one weird uh, unrealistic standard that people don't look at is the unrealistic standards provided by pornography. That provides mm -hmm. unrealistic ex ex uh, expectations to both sides, and that can also be quite dangerous. But um, generally speaking, like rich men in power set this this way. That is fairly accurate. That kind of ties into what I said before. It's like uh, rich men are a lot more choosy. They pit, they are a lot more like vain about the way they choose things. It seems like I don't have statistics on that, but that's mm -hmm. what it seems to be. So you know, rich women have more money, so they can sculpt themselves certain ways, so they can afford to have a chef that cooks for them, trainer, and then girls growing up will see things like that, and it can cause problems like anorexia, bulimia, it can cause a lot of self confidence issues. Same goes for boys too, because when you're younger. It doesn't matter what you do. You can't build yourself like, you know, like the the ideal guy when you watch those movies and you think you should. But your muscle, mm -hmm. your muscular groups aren't developed enough to actually look that way. So that can cause problems for guys. Like uh, that kind of thing drove me to work out too hard when I was in high school. I ended up hurting myself. That happens for a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. With girls, it can lead to very long term issues as well. Yeah. Well. So my my question is, did certain people do it that shouldn't have and if you change certain aspects like the people that complain about it the most i i wonder if there's aspects that you could change and it would fix it or is this um part of humanity are humans always going to be making it known who they're attracted to because so like let's say me and you so me and you talk about mm -hmm. politics philosophy that kind of thing yeah but if somebody just questioned us, if we just had a person asking us random questions or we were answering questions on the internet and somebody said like, uh, what type of women are you most attracted to or something? And then us sharing our thoughts and then all the other humans in the world sharing their thoughts will lead to this like basic idea of us all having some kind of an understanding of what we like. And so would the ideal mm -hmm. thing be that no humans ever express what they're attracted to? No, I think the ideal thing, honestly, because it's it's ridiculous to expect people not to have like preferences. You know, it's mm -hmm. like the whole discourse around like you can't have a race preference. You can. It doesn't have to be couched mm -hmm. in racism. It just might be like a, what's the word? like visual, the aesthetic, right? Yeah. Uh, as long as you're not making broad generalizations about people explain it but that's a whole nother 
fucking topic. Um, mm-hmm. The thing, the better thing would be to, instead of portraying like one type of body, like if you think of the 90s, it was heroin sheep. When you think of, I don't know, the early 2000s, it was a little bit thicker, but not really chubby. You couldn't have a stomach. Now we've gotten to a time when we have broader representation of models and things like that. So it's showing people like it's okay to look normal. And that's that's really the best way to go about it is to say like, this is what I like, but you can like what you want. It's perfectly fine if we disagree. You can look how you want. Somebody will find you attractive. It's important to let people know that it doesn't necessarily matter what you look like. You should just be comfortable with yourself. And at yeah. the end of the day, somebody will find you attractive. That would be the best way to go about it. And to have what we're trying to have now is a more broad representation of like body styles, and shapes, and things like that. For sure. Well, so like, the, uh, yeah. the, the thing that made me think of this topic is I was randomly thinking of influencers, this idea of mm-hmm. people on like Instagram and TikTok making videos and taking pictures of themselves and people loving them, having millions of followers and all, all kinds of stuff. But I I noticed the thing that's different is you can say that the company Victoria's Secret um, needs to branch out and have these different sizes because a certain amount of people are demanding that. But oh, it's, when it's, it comes it's to not like just that, it's also because the treatment of those models and the way that they make them exercise and diet is inhumane. <laughs> Oh, maybe, maybe, but, um, like, so aside from those kind of details, just as far as who's chosen for the image, I thought it was interesting thinking about influencers because we choose it. Like I obviously, I have no interest in uh, most influencers other than the idea of following somebody that has like, I'm pretty into like health stuff and calisthenic, uh, workout training and stuff. But anyways, um, as far as somebody being attractive and taking sexy pictures of them, sticking their butt out and stuff like that. And millions of people like people following like the Kardashians and stuff. There are, let's, let's assume, because this is probably right, that a lot of the girls and, um, and young women that are thought of as being um, negatively affected by beauty standards in our society, those people are choosing, like they, they might, they might be, like so let's say that they're negatively affected by what they see that other people choose for us to see on billboards and stuff like victoria's secret and actresses but Mm -hmm. the question is if they are being like kind of forced to see a thing then why are they choosing to follow these other people and so i i think we do it ourselves i think i think we all know what part of it part of it's not just like there, there's little things that tie into it. Right? It's not just yeah. seeing that person and emulating it. They end up emulating it because they see it. And then when you see news coverage about people like this, it's only certain shapes of people that are called like, wow, look at her. She's so beautiful. There's only like, you'll hear people around you, even in like high school talking about, say like when I was in high school, Kim Kardashian was like the big hot thing. Mm-hmm. So girls would feel really bad about themselves because they couldn't, you know, look like her because she is fake from head to toe. Because the guys at my school would talk about her and then girls who like those dudes would eventually try to like do things and it was really unhealthy. It's like the way they're covered, the way it's talked about in media, the way that you hear other people around you talk about it, the ideas that you start to get because of the things you see. It's like um, going back to the porn analogy most men think that they are inadequately sized even when they're above average because of the influence of porn in america because every guy in that in that era at least in america is like huge which is unrealistic most women wouldn't want that anyway because that would be like painful right like most women want a guy who's about average but even dudes who are well above the average consider themselves inadequate because of that That ties into how girls, how young girls and young guys see like body sizes represented in various forms of media. They feel themselves to be inadequate because they can't match that standard. Like, uh, like if you're poor, you're more likely to end up fat because, you know, you eat a lot more salt and sugar in your diet because you have to eat a lot more processed food. That makes it a lot harder to keep a flat stomach and try to shape your body the way you want to you can't afford a trainer you can't afford to diet things like that so it leads these kids and like 
even people in their 20s, sometimes even older women and men to turn to anorexia and things like that. With guys, it also has to do with like sports. Like when I was a wrestler, our coaches would encourage us to dehydrate for a couple of days before weigh-ins, stuff like that. Uh, there's there's a lot of it that all ties together. Yeah, yeah. Well, and there are complications with things where something like the the sport thing in the way, and that's definitely not good. But as far as um what we view as desirable and want, I still can't. It seems to me that it's more likely that it's a natural thing. Like it's um, even if we didn't, even if we remove a lot of the things in the way, because somebody that's on Instagram that can choose who they follow mm -hmm. and how they spend their time on there. I don't know exactly what it is about. L l l I guess we can try to go over that and throw out some guesses. It might be silly of us because so I can't even uh... begin to guess, but well, hold on one sec. If a, sure. if a girl uh, or a woman that is is just a regular person is on instagram what makes their mindset choose to find what we think of as beauty standards and follow that versus saying oh i hate these beauty standards i want to follow somebody that's the opposite well everybody wants to be perceived as attractive right mm -hmm. so it's it's like uh, you end up feeling some kind of inadequacy and then it can be like your own self-flagellation that you follow people that look the way you want to look because you just feel bad about yourself. That's usually what drives people into anorexia and, and bulimia is self-flagellation essentially is just beating yourself up because you think you're not doing enough to try to look the way you want to look. But another thing is that uh, the key word in all that is influencers. Influencers become influencers because they get advertised. When you go on Instagram, you get targeted ads. And if an influencer, like it, say that you like tea, there's there's a whole community of people that just look at tea content. It's a real thing. Oh, okay. And every female influencer for a long time, I don't know if it's still the case, uh, promotes like tummy tea, right? This kind of stuff that like makes you lose weight. So if you follow tea, you're going to see these people and they're going to start mm -hmm. popping up timeline and then eventually you might follow them because they might have some takes that you like it could need it might not even be influencers it could just be regular people like say you follow like the political side of twitter everybody's got a picture of themselves on twitter you end up following a particular person you start to idolize them you start to wish you could be a little bit more like that person because you'd like to see yourself in them and then you start to realize you start to pick apart at the differences between the two of you a lot of people have uh like self uh, self confidence issues that they haven't really taken the time to work out because we have abysmal mental health in this country. Mm. Um, but another thing is that like beauty standards aren't always just set by like the aristocracy. That is a big part of it. But another part is culture. Like in America right now, we've gone through cultural shifts for beauty standards probably nine times in the last twenty years. But if you look at a place like Samoa, in Samoa the beauty standard has always been like chunky women, right? Like a chick with like a little bit of a belly, you know, like a, like a heavy set leg, because that's a sign of like wealth. At least it was originally. Another thing is like tattoos are big culturally there. You have people in certain places that get like facial tattoos, like women get like big facial tattoos on chins in some cultures. And that's like a big thing for their beauty standards. Oh, okay. It, it all changes culture to culture. Like if you were to look up like prettiest women by country, uh -huh. Russia has a very specific idea. Germany has a very specific idea. America does. It's all dependent on where you live as well and how it gets promoted by the culture itself. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I just did a quick search. Du -du 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 -du. It looks like the Samoan situation is a diet thing where it says um, about 200 years ago and before um, Samoans were not obese. So it, it's probably something similar to um, the whole thing with Native Americans and alcohol, where if somebody's not introduced to something and then they get introduced to it, it can have a negative effect. I have heard that um, there are countries and there are um, just in the past in general that the idea of having a little more weight, like – that people would rather see somebody look like um, they are wealthy and can afford food versus somebody looking like mm -hmm. they just came out of Auschwitz or something. 
Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think it's what people think of like it's kind of like when somebody uses the word curvy for somebody that just has yeah. like a Kim Kardashian, like lots of curves versus curvy, mm -hmm. where if somebody is like 300 pounds overweight like or something. Realistic. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so the same thing there where you can take somebody, did you watch uh Mandalorian? So uh, no, timing. I'm not, I'm not a big like star Wars guy. I'm uh, okay. more of, like, a kind of dude. Gotcha. There's just a lady, uh, an actress in there that is, uh, well, you might remember her. She got uh, super canceled. and Oh, you were talking like... about the lady who got hired by the Daily Wire, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so yeah. that lady. Uh, she not, not, uh, she not compared getting... forced vaccination to, to, to the Holocaust. I remember that. I can't remember uh, her name, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't think of it either. But uh, anyways, I don't know if you can think of her look. But I'm guessing yeah. her look is what she was. People... Uh, she was an MMA fighter. Yeah. yeah, and so she she was she's... in uh, she was in Deadpool. Oh, she was she... Angel. In Deadpool. Okay. Yeah, she yeah, was so... the, the beefy one. Yes. Okay, so like I think her look is probably what people think of. Where if she was around back in the day, uh, she would be more ideal than maybe Victoria's Secret looking models today. <laughs> um, I so I don't think I don't think. Um, I, I think humans definitely like on average have a certain look that they're attracted to. And um, I don't know. It's a bummer when people don't fit that look. Like I don't look anything like Ryan Gosling, but uh, if you <laughs> see Ryan Gosling in the movie, crazy, stupid love, it's ridiculous yeah. what that man looks like. And didn't, it might, be uh, didn't, what was her name? Uh, Olivia Stone. She was like, you look like you're a cutout or something like that. You oh look, yeah. I yeah, can't yeah. Remember Emma what Stone. Said, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Stone. What is that line? Something I know what you're talking about cut out of a, a magazine or something um yeah but uh but yeah anyways um what was i gonna say i had a thing to say but then i i looked up i, I well let's look at it like this you know i like hypotheticals um yeah. let's imagine uh somehow you just take um a hundred uh a hundred females and a hundred males they you have them be born on some island where they're not they're not familiar with our culture or any other culture somehow they get raised mm -hmm. up in this way where they i don't know somehow they stay alive on this island but they aren't influenced by anything and uh mm -hmm. and then you start like giving them options uh well let's just say you start asking them questions so uh, let's say they make it to 18 without contacting each other. And now they get to contact each other. Mm -hmm. They get to live this world out and there's a hundred men, hundred women, and may maybe they're all of different body types and different things. And then if you, if you start asking like the men, like, Oh, like what height do you prefer in women? And they naturally just happen to, when they look and they're being honest, they're not influenced by anything on average there will be an average there will be whether it was five foot or six foot there will be an average or if you even ask questions like if one girl randomly thinks of the idea of figuring out how to shave her legs and then mm -hmm. and then like 80 of the guys funny enough that's a really like modern thing in oh, america no, no. that's yeah i know it is but, I'm, um, I'm just it's just a thing that people think people have been doing for a long time well, let's do. Let's There's reverse it then. Stuff, yeah. Let's reverse so, it then. Hold on, let's hold say on. I, I would like to. Okay. I'd like to tweak this a little bit. So, okay. let's say you had hundred men, hundred men, hundred women, and they all like coexisted, but they weren't influenced by culture. Okay. If you ask them like what they would find like the most attractive, chances are because they're on an island, what they would look for would be a matter of. Like one would be so if we're just going visual, let's just stick to that because that makes it a lot less complicated. For sure, um, it would probably be like uh, better musculature, uh, not necessarily height because height can be a hindrance when it comes to making shelters and things like that. Mm -hmm. It would probably just be like a little bit live, somebody who can hunt, someone who can help me survive, someone who can help me climb trees and get coconut. Like it, it would be totally built around survival. Well, let so me cut you off then. Because you, be you are making a perfect point. So let me cut you off and fix it to where your point doesn't work. Okay. So let's make, <laughs> let's make this place be designed for this study. So okay. 
rich people set this up. There's endless resources. They're on the island because people are wanting to find out what these people end up liking. And they don't have any worries. There's no need for survival. There's endless amounts of food. So people, uh, if they want to choose certain foods, can get overweight or they can eat healthy food. There's uh, endless okay. amounts of everything. And let's say even like clothing, like they like every type of clothing is dropped off so people can wear baggy stuff, tight stuff. They can wear every different color. And whatever get, appeals. Yeah. yeah. They get, they get clothes from cultures all the way back to Jesus and then to now <laughs> and uh, Just the robes and the sashes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's put it in that um, area and then, um, okay. So ponder that. And then I'm going to bring up the leg thing real quick. So, so let's say it's the other way around. Yeah. Let's say for some reason, all the women had shaved their legs for a little while and that's all men knew were shaved legs. And one woman grows her leg hair out and then all the dudes are just going nuts over it. They find it so hot. And let's say 80% of the men say that leg hair is awesome. I love the look of that. Now, mm -hmm. somebody that maybe naturally wouldn't have done it on their own, but because men and women are kind of humans, in general, in most animals, their goals are to spend all their days and nights figuring out how to mate with people because that's how our brains are wired. Um, so so yeah. some women that go, oh, okay, I'm cool with leg hair and not leg hair. And 80% of the dudes on this island seem to uh, like leg hair. So then a bunch of the, the women decide, okay, I'm going to grow out my leg hair because that's the popular mm -hmm. thing here. Do you see do you see anything wrong with that? Do you feel like they were falsely um, influenced too by preference? That would be kind of. So uh one, the uh the first half of this, there actually was an experiment done on mice a long time ago. I think it was called like the Paradise Experiment, where uh the mice were put in a in a particular situation where they would never have to hunt, they would never need for food. Oh yeah, I heard about. It this. Turned out what uh what happened was there uh, a natural hierarchy kind of formed where there were these like bigger male rats that would just bully the other ones, and then the female rats stopped reproducing and they just kind of got fat and lived on their own, and a bunch of the other male rats did as well, and eventually it all just kind of crumbled, like it all just kind of fell apart, which just. I don't remember why I thought that pertained to this, but it was it was an interesting thing to know. Mm. But uh, with that, that would be like an undue influence due to preferences. The uh, the thing that you would need to do to kind of cut down on the negative effects of even something as simple as I like shaved legs, I don't, is just like instilling in people from a young age that like it's okay for you to be who you are. You don't need to tailor yourself to other people. Somebody will come along that you like that likes you, which is weirdly something we don't really teach kids, which I don't understand. But mm -hmm. you know, that's just me. But uh, but, but the question is: yes. is telling somebody they should be who they are, they don't need to change for anybody else. Does that make it wrong to change if you want to? Like no. if you if you want to because of hearing what the average person likes, like yeah, like I, I don't know. I just I feel like so I, I get what you're getting at. So not it would be less of an like influence, like a like a direct influence kind of problem because there would be more of a matter of choice in that. If you could instill self confidence in everyone, which it, there will always be people that have anxiety and self confidence issues but in a perfect world where that didn't happen and you could instill self-confidence in people from a young age if they chose to change how they looked because of what other people liked that might still kind of be a problem but there wouldn't be the issue of pressure there is a pressure in in every society to look a certain way or act a certain way sure. be a certain way without that kind of pressure or at least telling people like you don't need to cave to that pressure. It's really not that important and, and properly instilling that in people. It would be a lot less problematic of an issue, but it might still kind of be one. It just depends on how a particular culture or society handles it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like well, a, a like, lot so... more of a be with people for who they are, not how they look kind of approach, which not everybody's for a lot of people are 
like just all aesthetic you know that'll always yeah. be that way i mean just because people naturally react to like the littlest things but like so for example yeah. i i feel like i'm a pretty confident person i do what i want to do i but i'm still going to be influenced by things so like it's not thought of as something too acceptable for men to wear dresses if i saw a dress and i'm like oh i think i want to wear that but it but uh I I would probably I I probably wouldn't do it. So I I don't have any interest in it. I actually like have a loathing for dresses. I I wish uh women didn't wear them either. I'm just a weird random thing. <laughs> but um, but I I feel like I economically speaking, women are the ones who should be wearing pants, and we should be wearing the, the skirts and the dresses anatomically, like mm, the Scots gotcha. had it right. Gotcha, gotcha. But um. Um, so I, I don't have any interest in wearing them, but imagine I did, if I had interest in wearing them, but I, I looked at our society and I'm like, okay, like this is something I'd want to do, but I don't, I don't need it. And our society is like, I, if I walked down the street, I'd be looked at very weird. So I don't think mm -hmm. there's, I don't think I'm being tricked by our society and bad ideas and beauty standards to not do it. I'm just looking at all the options and I'm looking at what's thought of as acceptable and not acceptable. And like there, if it becomes the most um, popular thing ever to wear like Hawaiian shirts, I probably will be like, I'm, I don't care that it's a popular thing and that girls might like it. I, I, I don't like the look of Hawaiian shirts. And, um, mm -hmm. and like, I used to think V-necks looked funny. I, I personally like V-necks right now, but, but uh, mm -hmm. when everybody was wearing V-necks, I think you might have one. Is that a V? No, maybe not. Um, yeah, it is. <laughs> there you go. Um, it's so just like, the only black shirt I have that'll fit me. I don't really like being next to myself. Oh, gotcha. I, I, I tend to like them, but anyways, um, so I think when, I, when I'm in really good shape, I like a v neck, but that's just okay. because it lets you show off like what you've actually worked to attain. Yeah, all yeah, I've yeah. worked to attain is like bitch tits, so I'm yeah. not really feeling it right now. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, I feel like people can do. I don't know. People don't want to go too far out of the realm of what works, but people, you also don't have to do something. You don't, you don't have to look at something and because it's popular, you do it, but I don't think there's mm -hmm. anything wrong with adjusting it slightly based on what's liked or not liked. If you want to be thought of as attractive, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be viewed as attractive and therefore doing what the norm, like the averages are for what your species finds attractive. Well, I mean, kind of, but that's a lot of, a lot to do with social pressure. Like there's a lot of guys who would like to wear dresses or chokers or paint their nails, but because of the way they would be viewed by the people around them, or society at large, they don't do it, even though it's something they'd really like to do. That's part of the issue of like the social pressure is it restricts what you can do and tries to even subconsciously kind of force you into a particular bubble. There's a lot of variation within those bubbles, especially now. Like if you look back at um, 50s, 60s, like around the time of the Bronx Tale, right? You were expected to be clean shaven, wear a suit, look really nice, dress down, have short hair. Mm -hmm. Now that's not as much of an expectation because people just stop giving shit about it. But like in the Bronx, if you were a dude with long hair and a long beard, you might get your ass kicked in the street. So people didn't want to do it because yeah. they knew that there was a big social issue. With it. Breaking down societal barriers to allow people just to do basic things that they want is like an important part of dealing with how people perceive themselves and breaking down the the issues that come with social pressures around appearance or clothing that you wear. I mean, one day society might just go back to like Paleolithic times and just walk around naked all the time because clothes make you hot. We that'd don't cool. really know how that. Yeah, that'd be dope, but that would require a lot of self confidence in people, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. But like that <laughs> yes. would. Even even in that society, there'd be a lot of undue pressures on things you couldn't really change. Yeah, which draws back to my yeah. example of like size pornography. Mm. Well, let me comment really quick on uh, the the beating up in the street. I think there's a huge difference um, between 
aggressive pressures and just a natural pressure from preference. So if somebody is aware of what people like, they might feel this pressure to want to be more like what the average liked thing is. And I think there's no need to change that whatsoever. But if you have like aggressive pressures where somebody, because somebody would actually physically harm, like say a trans person walking walking down the street or something. Therefore, yeah. they are scared to do it. There's a difference between feeling like, oh, people are going to look at me funny because they think this looks strange. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, you shouldn't make somebody look bad or like make somebody, you shouldn't make somebody feel bad because they want to do what they want to do. But if somebody, like if I saw somebody wearing a 10 foot tall hat that they were balancing on their head. I'm going to look at them kind of funny. I'm going to be like, <laughs> what's happening? What is this? Yeah. And uh, so same, thing. Dome ass hat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> same thing with a, uh, with a dude wearing a dress. Like if I saw a dude that looked like you, you know, beard, uh, manly looking dude, um, just with like a, a bright pink flowery dress on, I'm not going to be like, Oh, you should change that. Cause God hates you or something. I will. I would, I, but I would look at you and I would go like, this is one of the stranger things I've seen today. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that as long as people aren't making you feel like you're going to be physically harmed. So that's that's kind of the big difference there. I don't see an issue in having thoughts on what you find to be attractive or not attractive or funny looking. Humans are just going to like what they like. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not generally where the issue comes from, right? It's, it's no. more from the people who will be outspoken the people who will tell you you need to change things, like people with outdated beliefs in your own family that'll tell you that, or people on the street who will rudely walk up to you and like challenge you on it. Hmm. Part of the issue is that most people, well, maybe not even most, but a lot of people are so willing to be outspoken because what they find attractive, they'll put people down because they don't look the way they want to look. And gotcha. that's like that's just like one of the negative sides of, some specific societies ours included like uh america specifically if if i were to walk down the street and address the number of people that would have cost me on the street and the chance that i would get in a fist fight are like astronomical like if i I went to work is it a florida thing i mean no it's i mean a lot of it has to do with like red states specifically if you were in california you would still get a bunch of people that fuck with you over but not as much as like florida ohio Texas, places like that. I mean, unless you live in Austin. Austin, generally, you probably get away with it, but that's because Austin's catchphrase is keeping it weird. <laughs> but, like, you know, it's um, a lot of it is dependent on where you live because every state is, in its own way, its own little society. Every state has its own little culture. Hmm. But if you take smaller countries, like uh, Jews, Singapore, say Singapore, if you're a guy who wants to walk down the street in a dress, well, I mean, if you look like me, you're already not part of the beauty standard in Singapore. In Singapore, uh, in a lot of, especially in like Eastern countries, a lot of the aesthetic is like more effeminate men, weaker chins, like more like feathered out hair, thin guys, stuff like that. Hmm. If Even if you fit into that beauty standard, if you were to wear a dress and walk down the street, the chances that somebody would walk up to you and tell you that you shouldn't be wearing that are pretty high. It's, it's just, uh, we have oddly rigid ideas around the clothing that we wear because it's so deeply gendered. Like, uh, for example, if you go back to the early 1900s, boys until they were about five or six weren't called boys. Every child was called a girl. And little girls wore blue. Little boys wore pink. And a lot of times they wore dresses and bigger clothes, partially because of the expense of buying new clothes and partially because that was what was considered like regular. Wait, then. boys would be – all children would be called girls until the boys grew up? Yeah, for a little while. That's a weird thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's weird. Boys weren't, boys weren't considered distinct – from from girls specifically until they started to show features that made them distinct. So all babies kind of look the same. So they would all just be either be called kids or girls. That's just kind of how it was. At least from what I've read, there is always a chance that what I've read is wrong. But from what I understand from the textbook I read, that's how it was. 
It's gotcha. uh, like a lot of the things that we take for to be like granted in our culture are fairly new things. Mm-hmm. But if you look at um, like that, that's part of the issue with beauty standards is they constantly change. They're constantly shifting. So it's kind of impossible to always meet the beauty standard. The constant flux in your weight and diet alone could cause a lot of damage. Just gotcha. physically speaking. Do you think they change within people? Like, do you think people like when I look at people and I find them attractive, do you think part of it is a subconscious thing where I'm accepting what my society finds attractive? Yes. Because that's of weird. It is the like even influence if- of the media around you. I wonder, I don't doubt the possibility of that, but I don't, I don't think it's a high percentage because if I'm just looking with my eyes and I see 50 people and I, my brain, cause I mean, I don't, I don't like when I analyze things and think about things, uh, you know, I'm using my brain, I'm trying to figure things out or whatever. When I see somebody I find attractive, I just see an attractive person and my, my mind goes, Ooh, look at that. And I look as long <laughs> as I can without uh, being caught looking without being creepy. Being but, yeah, um, without being caught by my if, wife or b- if by you, the person. If you think at. back ten years and think about uh-huh. the person you thought, like the the beauty standard that you found, mm-hmm. it's probably a little different than it is now. Mm-hmm. It changes over time. I would guess it a might lot of change. Times it has to do with the media because if you think back to like, even though like actresses are a good example of it because like uh, say like at one point Cameron Diaz is super hot because she's thin and she's got small boobs. And then mm-hmm. 10 years later, nobody thinks about her because now the beauty standards changed. And now it's like a, a slightly heavier girl who's got big old boobs. And then another time it would be small boobs and big butts. It changes consistently. And then yeah. you through subtle influences, like in and not like not like uh what's the word? Not like subliminal messaging, subtle influences, just little little changes in the way people are represented in the media can yeah. change the way that you look at people and what you find attractive. Yeah, but I wouldn't think it could be much. So let's say I found the the actress we we're talking about that left uh that got fired from Mandalorian. Yeah. <laughs> let's say that that Gina all- Carano. Gina Carano, there we go. Let's say that almost That's every true. time I saw a lady that I thought was attractive, she had that look. Like l- we're talking more than nine times out of ten. I see, I see that body type and it can fluctuate hair color, height, that kind of thing, but that's the body mm-hmm. type. And then let's say, let's say you found, um, very like stick thin, um, Cameron Diaz types, um, attractive. Yeah. I wouldn't think that any influence by the media would make it to where if you were in, a a store and you and let's say that um well okay so you're in a store and you see a type that looks like Cameron Diaz let's say Cameron Diaz is at the store and uh, Gina Carano is <laughs> at the store in various different body types I would think that if your brain got truly attracted to a certain look if like when you looked at something you were attracted it couldn't be too much of a like. You wouldn't just go, that's normally what makes me attracted in my natural animal state, but my brain's shifted because of influence. Well, well, it's it's not quite that abrupt. It's like a long term thing. Because the the body the body type generally stays the same for anywhere between five and ten years. So over okay. time, if you're somebody who watches a lot of movies or reads like the magazines a lot since you're constantly being shown the same type of person it kind of very lightly changes the way you look at this it's not going to like drastically shift until a good long time of it all and sometimes it doesn't change but for a lot of people it, it shifts and if you look at like uh i don't know like people in my age range if you have say like the iCloud and you look back at the pictures in your phone from years ago to now of like, say you're somebody who likes screenshots women from magazines. Okay. If you look at how your attraction has changed over time, you will notice a difference. It's not something you notice on a short term scale. But it's something I, you notice over a long period of time. But what I wonder is instead of comparing what you were attracted to then to what you're attracted to now, what if you compared what you were attracted to then 
to a whole bunch of options from back then. Do you think you would go, oh, what was I thinking? This other person from back then is so much more attractive. Or do you think yes. the styles could affect it? Like like Cameron, D looking at Cameron well, Diaz and something about more. Mary. Like, like, so like when I, when I was in high school, it was a couple years <laughs> before the skinny jean thing got popular. So women yeah. now, how it looks like their, their, their jeans and their leggings, it just looks like they're painted on them. So you're basically seeing women naked now, mm -hmm. um, in a, in a sense that didn't exist when I was in high school, the jean thing started like yeah. two years later. And then the legging thing started like, what, uh, what year were you, what years were you in high school? Uh, early two thousands early 2000s okay yeah, so that was change if if you went to school in say the late 80s early 90s and you were in high school one big thing would have changed hmm. women shave themselves in different ways now than they did back then mm -hmm. like that's a thing that like say like uh people get there's there's old fuddy duddies that like are anti-sex work or whatever they call them sports uh that go like women shave their privates now and they didn't used to and you used to only be able to find this in fetish magazines like those everything can be influenced by culture the way you groom yourself the way you dress yourself the way you shape yourself all of it can but it's it's subtle over time right mm -hmm. little influences not just directly to you but the people around you and watching how it influences them can change you too because humans are social animals if you yeah. look at, like, if your friends, like, uh, think like going to a party with a bunch of dudes, and they talk about, like, oh, this person's really hot. You might not agree with them, but in group bias, you'd go, like, yeah, yeah, she's hot. And over time, you might actually start to think that, because you would see the people around you thinking that you might, like, it might just, like, to start to slightly shift things. It's like when you get yeah. in relationships. Little things about you change over time in relationships because you're trying to conform with what that person you're with wants. Interesting. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I'd be curious to read up on it to see because I, I know that you could be, you could feel like you need to say a certain thing around your friends, and I could see, um, I could see popular things adjusting things slightly, but I feel like when it comes down to it, if it comes down to like, um just looking at people in public or choosing what you watch. If you watch something of a sexual nature, if you're by yourself choosing what to do, I think your, your basic instincts are going to come into it. And then also it's going to depend on variety of option. Uh, Cause I, I think, I think when it, um, I think people do shift what they're willing to um, accept as variety of option. Like when you talk about the, the the people set in their ways that would say like oh back in my day they didn't shave or whatever um yeah that i think that's a difference of if like when you get used to something that you're used to and then you get older you kind of whatever it is scientifically that's happening in your brain um kind of cements the thing in there where you have this this feeling of you you liked what you like you got what you got out of all the things you got and then seeing things change you look at it and you go oh that's strange where that same person if they got if they had that option when they were younger they might have liked it same thing where if somebody looks at somebody like covered in tattoos or piercings or something they yeah. might go like oh They're, like back uh, when to, i was yeah to move things to like something inanimate cars are a good example but that's gonna take a lot longer this mm -hmm. when i started this like the first time i used one was like six years ago the internet was flooded with people who made like gay jokes about it and then there were if you used one outside oh. people would like accost you for it or they would make fun of you now enough people use them that that has changed people don't bother me about it people mm -hmm. don't come up and like make little jabs about it anymore. you don't see that on the internet now you just see people talking about, like, if they even talk about it, they talk about whether or not they think it's better than smoking. But back even just six years ago, culturally, like, because people perceive them as, like, a new thing, people looked at them very different. Mm. They looked like everybody was like, oh, just start smoking, be like a man. Like, that was, like, a real thing that you would see online all the time as, like, a joke. Mm -hmm. But now I can walk down the street with this in my hand and people don't fucking bother me about it. They used yeah. to. I'm still used to people doing it. 
but, but my guess is so yeah. let's say i let's say i use those and i started back when you were saying that people would like make fun of people for it if i thought it was fine and i looked at it and i said oh this is cool looking like i and, and i didn't know anybody else's opinion on it and then i find out that people hate them and they're making fun of them culturally i might say oh i don't see what they're talking about but I'm going to leave this at home. I don't want to be looked at weird. And, and so mm -hmm. that's a bummer that I'm choosing that I'm making that choice, but I don't think I would easily get to the point where I would look at it and I'd go, Oh, now I see it as funny looking. I would just make my choices based off what the, the majority well, part did. of it is that it's more that like what you said is like, Oh, I'll just leave it at home. It's that people will be like, well, you know, I don't want to be shamed, so I'm just going to conform. Yeah. And that changes the way people look at themselves. So let's say, like, uh, you're a girl with a gut, right? This is the most common way that people walk around. A little bit of gut, there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see, like, a lot of people around you are real skinny, like, I live in a beach town, so mm -hmm. that's pretty common here. It makes people feel really, like, it makes them look at themselves differently. It makes them see themselves like, am I gross or am I normal? Are those people weird? And then because the people around you look like that, you start to think like, maybe I should look that way. And you start to tailor things like that. Mm -hmm. It can make people change diets, clothes, things like that. Like uh, when we first moved here and we went to the beach, it made my girlfriend really, uh, really self-conscious because a lot of the people here are very thin. And she's not because we've been poor for a while. And, and I prefer a woman with a little bit of belly on her. I don't really like a skinny girl. Mm -hmm. So she got real self-conscious about it. And it took a long time to break that down. And that's just like, if she just lived by herself, the chances are that she would start changing things to try to lose a lot of weight and try to tailor how she looked. Like, uh, you know, if you see somebody wearing certain kinds of clothes or if you go to bars and you see a guy, like a bunch of guys with the same type of shirt on and they're all getting hit on and you're trying to get you might start buying that shirt yeah. because you realize that they get the uh, they get attention for it. Yeah, it's like peacock feathers. Little, yeah, they're little subtle things that happen through society that start to tweak the way that you look at yourself. See, and I that's think in some cases issue, there's like bad ones, but in other cases there's not. Like that's a good one. If you go to a bar and you see a certain type of thing get hit on a bunch, and you want to get hit on, you change to that. That's that's Even nature. That's animals. You don't like. Well, kind of. Oh, but sure. We have, yeah. but like we are out, we, you got to remember that people are like removed from nature. We oh, have true. taken ourselves out of it. But it doesn't so mean that we wouldn't do taking it, certain elements. So like that's, yeah. But if, if say it's like uh, starched white shirts, mm -hmm. starch shirts are very uncomfortable. They're hot, they're itchy. But even if you hate them, and you don't want to spend your money on it at the end of the day, if other people are getting attention, you're going to change that. And eventually yeah. that can change the way that you see starch white shirts, even that's, if it's something that's you hate. True. No, that, that's, that's yeah. true. And I don't know what exactly it is that makes that happen. Like the first time I saw jogger pants, um, I don't know if you're familiar with them. I'm guessing you are. The first time I saw them, I thought they looked really funny. I, oh, I love I thought, joggers. Okay. They're really I, comfortable. Oh, I love them too. <laughs> I just thought they looked really funny. The people that were wearing them, it just gave me a certain vibe. It was a certain type of person. Um, yeah. You know, the first time I ever saw it, it just looked like, uh, you know, teenage super rich kids that just look like assholes like you know a jock type yeah. but with the the polo shirt when, uh, and then the joggers when i was in high school the big thing pants wise was uh these skinny jeans that half of them were solid like one solid color usually black or white and the other half had like checkerboard on oh. and even though i hate skinny jeans i was like everybody's wearing these even though i like baggy pants and chains because i'm like a big metalhead Maybe I should start dressing like this. Maybe I should start cutting my hair like the emo way. And I didn't have any lack of attention from, from girls or guys when I was in school. That was never an issue for me. But because the people around me were dressing a certain way, I started asking for those things. Yeah. And then, like, on top of that, once, like, big companies realize that something's selling well, they start to spike the prices. And that that's yeah. a whole another issue. With it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, like so... I I don't know what the answer is and I don't know exactly what it is, but yeah, with the joggers, I thought they were funny looking. 
And now I like them. I think they're great. And I don't know if I, because of society, I've been influenced or if it's just that because it was something new and I'm, I'm older now, I'm in my late thirties that like, I saw this thing and I thought like, oh, I don't like new things. Cause uh, <laughs> when you reach a certain age, you I, get I think, ways. honestly, I think it's just the human brain's ability, uh, uh, pattern seeking ability. You start to see patterns and things they're not. That's why you can look at like wood and see faces, even though there's not faces in it. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. Dots. So it's like, uh, you know, that old advertising shtick. Like, uh, I, I never knew there were so many commercials for mattresses until I needed a mattress. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a real phenomenon in your brain. Like when I started getting, like, when I started to love motorcycles, I started to see them everywhere. It seemed mm -hmm. like they were never there before. So maybe you notice something, even if you don't like it, you start to see more and more people around you wearing them because now they stick out to you and you think like, wow, everybody's wearing these. Maybe I should give them a try. Mm -hmm. Even if it's something you don't like or something you think looks weird. Yeah. So that that's not inherently bad. But when that becomes bad, that involves like corporations and, and beauty standards and pricing and things like that. What, what's more harmful is less the clothes outside of like really expensive clothes and more the, the body types that are an issue because body types are a lot different they're a lot harder to change if you're somebody like i'll use me as an example i weigh 265 pounds i don't look like it because i'm tall but i do i'm heavy mm -hmm. if i really tried to look the way that i want to look it would take a lot of effort and a lot of money and at the end of the day, I probably still wouldn't be happy with the outcome. Mm -hmm. But I would change it. And largely, the idea of what I want to be is influenced by what society says guys should look like. I want to be built again. I want to have like broad pecs, big arms, large legs, be just like stacked, right? Like yoked. But at the end of the day, if I if you try to change your body like that and you're not noticing the results, because the first people who will notice that you've lost weight are people who don't see you very often. You're always the last one to notice. Mm -hmm. You might start to do more dangerous things. A lot of guys turn to like steroids because they don't, they think it's going to make them build faster and that's really unhealthy or HGH. Uh, it might lead you to try to go on starvation diets because you think it'll help you shed pounds faster. And then mm -hmm. when inevitably you don't, because when you're in starvation, your body saves more sugar, it makes you dig deeper into that. And then that becomes anorexia mm -hmm. or bulimia if you start to binge eat. And then that just like spirals out of control. That's why you need therapy for shit like that because it's it's such a deep hole to get into. But that all can start from something very instant. It can just start from you seeing somebody on screen take their shirt off, be like, I want to look like that guy. Yeah. And then try for a little while. Don't real. And if you don't realize how long it takes to see results, you start to take drastic measures. And then that turns into self doubt. And then that turns into a big lack of self confidence. And then eventually that can in some cases turn to something dangerous. That's why instilling in people that like uh, societal standards of body types and beauty aren't the be all end all is very important because otherwise if they just start to conform to all that and they don't have the, the base self-confidence that they need, it can lead them down really dangerous roads. Like yeah, it leads girls sure. to kill themselves. It leads guys to do the same especially teenagers because teenagers have like hormonal imbalances and things like that that leads them to be more likely to get depressed and then that just falls into self-harm because they can't look the way they look it's For all sure. it all tumbles down yeah yeah and so it becomes a complicated mess of figuring what needs to change and i think the main thing that needs to change is nothing except adding in something i think you need to add in the instilling in the kids and so I think um, I think there are well, that, there are some that things would that would be a big change though. Oh, sure, that sure. Would require a I change just, in like media representation. I just I just meant that the idea of seeing like seeing a look and then going, okay, now I want to eat this way, or I want to I want to do this exercise, or I want to do this, and then you go to desperate measures that are bad. Like the have you um have you have you heard of a community on the internet called a, a Thinspiration? Do you know what that is? No. Thinspo. Thinspo is something that I've had to drag a lot of people out of because it's led to a lot of deaths. Thinspiration is uh -huh. like uh, people who promote anorexia. There's whole communities of people like this, really? especially for teenage girls. So they'll post like, I haven't eaten in two weeks and all I've had is ice water. And then the other people who've 
like just fallen into this pit will cheer them on and go like, yeah, go for a month. You can do it. And then they'll go like, I'm down to 129, 150. Look at me. I've lost all this weight. You can see my ribs. That's one of the real dangerous kind of ways that people can be influenced because that's not a hard community to find. A lot yeah. of people end up there just looking for like weight loss advice. Yeah. That's a lot of that wild. is built around like societal stuff. Yeah, so I gotta hop off here. I ran. I realized yeah. that I ran a bit late, and I gotta get to a thing. But uh, let's talk <laughs> about that soon. I don't. I don't usually talk about um health on the podcast, but I actually kind of want to. I want to get into the idea of like food addiction and stuff like that. So we should talk about that. But also, you brought oh, up actually, motorcycles, and I have yeah. an interesting oh, I theory. I have an interesting theory on why I think all motorcyclists are bad. Um. So let's. <laughs> <laughs> so let um. But it's complicated. I, um, we can I, talk about that next time. Actually, I actually really am interested to hear that now. Let's do it. It's it's a yeah. Maybe I'll send you an idea on the theory. That way you can uh, think it over, and then uh, we'll sure. break it down when we talk. Um, but yeah, it was great talking, man. And uh, yeah, yeah man. have a good one. You too.